Kim's in the hospital. Jerry's on vacation. So you get the third string. <laughs> Our scripture lessons are from Proverbs chapter 25. Verses 21 and 22. Let us tend to the reading of God's word. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap coals of fire on his head. And the Lord will reward you. Now from Romans chapter 12. Begin reading with the 17th verse, 3 through 21. Repay no one evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of God. Praise be unto God. Our scripture lesson today is from the book of Proverbs. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. My dad was pastoring a church in Nocona, Texas. Some of you are old enough to remember Nocona boots. That's where they're made. And one well, of the church members came to see him. She said, Preacher, my husband is so mean, I just don't know what to do. Dad said, Well, have you tried heaping burning coals on his head? She said, No, Preacher, but I tried boiling coffee. It just made him meaner. <laughs> That's not what this is talking about. Our text concerns being good to people who do not treat us well. In the New Testament, and by the way, the Old Testament is the New Testament scripture. In the text that we read from the Old Testament. It said, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Now, one of the things that we have to remember as we read scripture like this is that it's a metaphor. Jesus loved metaphors. The Old Testament Jews loved metaphors. And what he's talking about here is given to us in James chapter 4, I think it is, where 
Jesus is talking, I mean, some, James is talking about Jesus. And he tells us that we are made to be people who treat others well. Now, how does that work? In the New Testament, the word love means how you treat people, not how you feel about them. The Holy Spirit was smart. He knew we could not control how we feel. If you ever tried to control your feelings, it doesn't work, does it? We cannot control how we feel about people, but we can control how we treat people. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, well, we'll start with chapter 1, it gives us an order of salvation. And in this first chapter, we, have, we see that God has chosen us before the foundation of the world. He chose us. Uh, we're going on a little trip this week to see our youngest son, Jonathan, get married. We've made some reservations. Now, when we get to the hotel, they will have our names there. They will have a room for us there. It's like that when we die and go to heaven. When we enter the pearly gates, we will be chosen, we will be shown a room that has been chosen for us since the universe was created. I read in books that I, on popular science and on television and in the newspapers that the universe is old. It's a teenager when it comes to counting in billions of years. Try 13.4. Now that means that about 14 billion years ago, God wrote your name in his reservation book. And he assigns you a room. That means that when you get there, you will be expected. And God will check your name off. And you will be shown to a room within our Father's house. Now the second thing in salvation is that here on this earth we must be born again. We are children of this world, children of wrath, children of Satan. But Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and he said, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God. And Jesus told him, you must be born again. Now I want to ask you a question. How many of you ask your mom and daddy to be born? Anybody in here do that? 
I don't think so. Well, this rebirth, this regeneration, is something that God does for us that we cannot do for ourselves. He takes a child of the world. He takes a child of wrath. And he makes him to be his own child, a child of God. He makes him to be one of his own. One of the things that happens when we are reborn is that God breaks the power of reigning sin. Romans chapter 7 and in other places, sin is classified as enslaving people. That those who have not been reborn again are bound by the chains of slavery to sin. And one of the things that God does is that he breaks the power of reigning sin. You say, preacher, what about, what about free will? Well, up until one is reborn by the Holy Spirit, one has no free will. We are bound by chains of sin. That which we want to do, we can't do it. That which we don't want to do, we find ourselves doing it. And Paul concludes that passage by saying, Who shall deliver me from this slavery? God delivers us from that slavery. And having broke the bonds of the chains of sin, he offers us a free access to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can respond to that gospel freely by hearing the word of God and choosing to live by faith rather than living by the culture of this world. Having done those three things, we've been chosen, we have been born again, we have been given the gift of faith. Then there remains one thing for us. That is sanctification. Sanctification is a big, long, double-jointed, 50-cent word that means that the longer that we live, the more we love Christ and the more we live like Christ. Some people think that when a person is made a Christian, that that is the high note in their Christian experience and that they spend the rest of their lives trying to get back on top of that mountain. Nothing could be further from the truth. When we are born again, when we receive the gift of faith and thereby trust in and rely upon Jesus Christ, for our salvation and for him alone we are just beginning the Christian walk for you see the longer we serve Christ the more that we love him and the more that we serve him and love him the more like Christ we become a person who has been a Christian for 20 or 30 years is further down the road.
than one who has just begun. So sanctification is that word. Now, James offers an analogy. You see, you and I really don't have charge of our sanctification. God is doing this for us and helping us with it. And he only helps Christians. James tells us that we ought to think about this. He said, if you find the spring of water, it's not going to be giving you salt water and fresh water. It's either one or the other. Uh, you know, there are some springs in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And they're just out in the open and people line up with uh, old milk jugs and other kind of jugs. And they get that water in that jug and carry it home. It's supposed to be good medicinal, to have good medicinal properties. I tried to taste it one time. Y'all ever try that? You like a mouthful of sulfur? Well, I guarantee you, as long as that spring has been running, it's been pouring out sulfur water. There's no fresh water there. James also said, when you want to gather some figs, you go to a fig tree. And I could add some things to that. When we lived in South Carolina, let's see, we had a, we had two fig trees, we had a kefir pear tree, we had two pecan trees, and uh, several pine trees. Now, the pecan trees only shed pecans. You could go there and get a bucket full of them in the right season. You never went to the pine trees to gather pecans. You could go to the fig trees, get wonderful figs. I love those things. And the kefir pears were those hard, crisp pears. They never got mushy. Oh, they made wonderful pies and preserves. There wasn't another tree like that in our yard. So when we see somebody, or when we find ourselves doing things that God requires of us, we have the assurance that we belong to Jesus Christ, that he has chosen us, that he has given us a new life in Christ. He has given us a life of faith whereby we could believe in Christ. And little by little and day by day, he's changing us to be more like Christ. It might be good for us this morning to do a little examination. What kind of uh, fruit is falling off of our trees? What kind do we give? And it will tell us a good deal about the process of sanctification in our own life. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for Christ. We thank you that he has called us 
that he has made us one of his own, that he has given us the gift of faith, and that he is changing us day by day and week by week to become more like you. Amen. Our hymn is 332, Without Him. Let everyone sing. able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne in glory to the only wise God our Lord and Savior be glory power and dominion now and forevermore Amen <laughs> 